Hi there, I'm on my way to Leipzig, also referred to as Heipzig. The city earned its nickname in part due to its unique art scene. Many of the city's creatives have received worldwide recognition. But the surrounding area is also following in the city's footsteps. I'll explore an old castle that's been renovated into a biker's hangout, as well as an artist's estate for young female sculptors. And I'll visit this remarkable photo spot. Let's go check it out. First up, I explore Leipzig. With almost 600,000 inhabitants, it's Saxony's biggest city. It may be around a thousand years old, but it's considered young, modern, and a magnet for creative people. I once even saw Leipzig referred to as the New Berlin in the New York Times. I pass by the famous monument to the Battle of the Nations and head to a highlight in the city's west, a former factory site known as the Baumwollspinnerei, or cotton mill. West Leipzig used to be an industrial quarter, but now it's home to the city's art scene, and it's rather the place to be. The city's creative heart beats in the cotton mill. It's an almost 10 hectare complex of galleries, workshops, exhibition spaces, shops, printers, and last but not least, the ateliers of more than 100 artists. I've come to meet one of them. Jochen Plokstis sells his paintings all over the world. He's agreed to take a break from work to talk to me. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, ich bin Hannah. Also, Have you always worked here here and is it a special place for you? I've been in Leipzig a long time now, longer than I've lived anywhere else in my life, including where I was born. So there must be something special, something that's kept me here for a very long time. Yeah. I came to the city to study painting, and then I stayed, because the conditions for painting in Leipzig are insanely good. Jochen studied at the famous Leipzig Academy of Fine Arts. He was a student of art world superstar Neo Rauch, one of Germany's most important painters. Rauch is considered a pioneer of the so-called New Leipzig School, an internationally celebrated movement in modern painting. Learning from him was an incredible privilege. He has very subtle ways of seeing what's not quite working in a picture. I liked that a lot. He has an almost alchemistic or metaphysical approach. He'd say, take another look at that part. And I'd ask myself what I'd done there and how it turned out. It's not apparent at first glance, but it can be felt and understood. In his master class, we went even deeper into things. Plus, there was the experience of working alongside a very famous person. That's so cool. It definitely gave my career a boost when I was starting out. Jochen graduated in 2006. In his studio, he collects art historical illustrations, postcards, advertisements, you name it. He shows me how he uses them to create his works. I also use more contemporary motifs. I found this in a magazine. It's Sofia Coppola. Yeah. Actually, she may have a similar little problem to me in that she probably gets asked all the time what it was like to have a famous father. <laughs> What's it like to study with Neo Rauch? What's it like to have Francis Ford Coppola as a father?
The Eigen and Art Gallery is one of the biggest names in the city's art scene. It was one of the first to open here in the cotton mill in 2005. And it's played a big role in propelling Leipzig to global fame as an art metropolis. It also represents Neo Rauch and has brought many other German painters to international attention. Another gallery benefiting from the cotton mill's fame is ASPN, which exhibits Jochen Plogsti's work. Gallerist Arne Linde has lived in Leipzig since 1994. She's watched the city develop. Arne tells me what sets it apart from other big centers of art. Leipzig has always had the charm of being a small East German city compared to Hong Kong, Miami or New York. And I think that charm is still there. At some point, Leipzig was nicknamed Heipzig. This is a point of contention for many Leipzigers, but Arne Linde sees it as a sign of recognition. I think it helps any city to be perceived as a good place with healthy self-confidence. And Heipzig is such an apt term. I don't even remember who came up with it, but everybody, or at least lots of people, know it. I think it's playful and positive. The biggest hype may have passed, but there's still interest in art from Leipzig, even beyond the new Leipzig school. The city of Leipzig is still growing tremendously, also in terms of the number of inhabitants. For example, here at the cotton mill, there are still constantly requests for studio space or living space. The site continues to receive a lot of attention, although it has to be said that this is the nicest site in the city or maybe even the region because of the proximity between the artistic production and galleries and other creative trades happening here. It's just a really nice place to spend time. Now I want to see what the mill looked like when it was still a factory. The archive gives me a glimpse into the past. The cotton mill was founded at the end of the 19th century, built on a former swamp. Within a few years, a factory town had sprung up with four large spinning mills, halls full of steam engines and workers' housing. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was the largest cotton mill in continental Europe. The cotton came from plantations in what was then the colony of German East Africa. After World War II and the partition of Germany, the cotton mill mainly produced goods for Eastern Europe. Sometimes there were up to 4,000 people working here and they were almost all women. But the end of communist East Germany also meant the decline of the factory. In 1993, it was finally shut down. Artists and those in the creative industry took advantage of cheap rental space to set up studios and workshops. Since 2001, the site has developed into a unique artistic hub. The cotton mill here feels almost like a mini city. It's so interesting to see so much art in a space that was once so industrial. On we go, I'm taking my e-car out of the city and into the countryside around Leipzig. For my next stop, my car is rather unsuitable. I'd be much better off with just two wheels. About 50 kilometers east of Leipzig is the Moto Sol Resort in Mutschen, a Baroque castle that's become a popular meeting place for bikers. What you find here are bikes, beers and burgers. I'm meeting the woman behind this crazy concept. Her name is Deborah Hay. Hey, Deborah. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. This looks amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. When the American moved from Seattle to Saxony, she brought the American lifestyle with her. 
So these are two of our Sportster burgers, mm -hmm. which is our basic burger, and one of our barbecue burger, which is called a gold wing. All of the burgers on our menu are named after motorcycles. Oh, wow. And it's yeah. all American style food, All American right? style food, yeah. And has it always been a success, the American food here for Germans? I think so, yeah. We grow every year and, um, and we, we have customers that come back and bring their families and, uh -huh. and book their parties and their Christmas parties. But Mutchen Castle is much more than a restaurant. Deborah shows me the plans she has for the old building, which she bought in 2016. This is amazing, I love yeah, the lighting. This is an idea. The businesswoman spent several years remodeling and renovating the castle interiors in shabby chic style. Now it's ready to be used for conferences and parties. The interior reflects Deborah's own enthusiasm for motorcycles, and she grew up with them. Her father raced professionally and dealt in European bikes. She herself has motorcycled in numerous countries and ridden tens of thousands of kilometers. She searched for a long time for a suitable property in Europe to realize her dream and make Moto Soul happen. And then um, my friend who lives in Bavaria said, you should look near Leipzig. And I hadn't been here. I'd been to Dresden, I'd been all around Berlin, but never been in Leipzig proper. Mm. And so um, started Googling what places were available and found this one. And then I came and saw it and it just instantly had the feeling that we were looking for and a lot of the right components. Mutchen Castle was built around 300 years ago. It was last used as a youth hostel, then it stood empty for a long time until Deborah brought it back to life. But I mean, motorbikes and castles isn't exactly a connection you would make naturally. <laughs> yes or no. You know, if you think about it, way back when they had knights on horseback okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> that, were, that were having fun and playing games and, and it was a sport. Okay, right? so that's the modern day And so day this is the vision. modern day version of, of the knights that cool. surrounded the castle, right? Nice. The castle sits on six hectares of land that leaves plenty of room for other ideas like live concerts and theater. Deborah Hay says she always has 10 projects on her mind at once. Particularly close to her heart is a mentoring program for women entrepreneurs. I've coached and mentored entrepreneurs the last 20 years of my life and I miss it not doing it here and I really want to help women. That's, a, that's a, for me really important because they don't have the mentors that they need and when they're really young they don't have um, somebody that tells them they can even do it. In my life I had one person in my life, one female role model who worked. Nobody else worked, none of my other family members. Definitely a cool place. Not far from Mutchen, I have an appointment with some more inspiring women. In the small village of Prusitz, there's a converted farm where intriguing things are happening. This 19th century estate is home to several young women artists who can create in peace here. I reckon I can maybe also get creative here. One of the artists is sculptor Mara Sandhok. She's been awarded one of the residency's scholarships and is spending four weeks on the estate with her children. The ability to combine family and art is what makes this residency special. Hello. Hi. This looks interesting. What's it like to live and work here? 
It's great. Being here with my kids is also really fun. It's exactly how I imagined working as a parent could be. I have my home life, then I just walk out the front door and step into my studio. It's just lovely. We're already counting down the days we have left. <laughs> Even though it's only week two. Mara is interested in organisms. Among other things, she works with fungal cultures and bacteria. She has an art degree, but she also studied medicine in Leipzig and teaches anatomy. Her knowledge and understanding of the body is reflected in her art. My field of interest is the human being, whether it's inner anatomy or the layers upon layers, or the soul we look for between those layers, or emotional states. All these ideas find their way into my work. In Prusitz, she's working with clay for the first time. She's been shaping it into sculptures modelled on a pig's intestine, although they look a bit like giant maggots. So. Here we go, huh? <laughs> so, let's try to get the fat maggot out. Maybe you can push it a bit, and then we'll try to lift it out together. Okay. Let's maybe turn it. Yes, catch it. Wow. <sighs> For almost 30 years, the Künstlergut, or Artists' Farmyard Prusitz, has invited women sculptors to live and work here. The association is headed by Ute Hartwig Schulz. She shows me the former stables, which have been converted. Part of the funding comes from the Saxony state government. The visiting artists' children are given care during the day. They can even get creative themselves. This program specifically supporting female artists with children is a one of a kind in Germany. The children watch their mums making art. And sometimes they're amazed because the things here are bigger than what they experience at home. But here they can see them. Do you have artists from all over Germany? From all over Germany, but also from Europe and internationally. Uh, really? Yeah, we're really effective in the region. But we're also happy to have hosted women artists from places like Brazil, Russia and America. Wow. That shows how unique this place is, which has been specially designed for women sculptors. Alongside Mara Sandrog, Katja Neubert is also currently a guest at the Künstlergut. She studied sculpture in the city of Halle. Here in Prusitz, she does most of her work in the plaster workshop. She's making impressions of thistle leaves she's found while walking in the area. I'm interested in these ornamental, almost baroque forms. They catch the viewer's eye. But when you look closely, they take on another appearance. I'd like to give this a shape from the body, so that it's not just a leaf, but could also be a body part. As an artist, Katja has previously worked with prints from the body like these bronze casts of the heel. Does the pressure mount as the weeks pass? A little bit, and there's your own internal pressure. You want to get as much done as possible in the time you have. Mara has an exhibition and I have one in Berlin too, and you want to have new work to present. What a special place. So that was very idyllic, but now it's time for some impressive architecture. I'm heading further north to a city with a significant history. Torgau was once the political center of the Reformation. The city on the River Elbe is also the site of a historic encounter. 
On the 25th of April, 1945, Soviet and US troops faced each other here and shook hands. The reenacted photo of the meeting was published around the world. It became a symbol of the end of World War II. The Renaissance era Hartenfels Castle stands almost right on the banks of the Elbe. It was built in the 16th century on the foundations of a medieval defensive complex. At the time, it was one of the most modern castle complexes in Europe. This castle is home to some somewhat unexpected guests, bears, but there's also a spectacular spiral staircase that just begs for a picture. Hi, hello. 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 Photographer Daniel Kuller is expecting me. Hi. Hi. So this looks as if it's your castle. <laughs> Not quite, but I like it here. Usually he's out and about in Leipzig with his camera. He shares his photos with his 90,000 Instagram followers, depicting individual people, cityscapes, and architecture. Normally, I'm more interested in the modern, places where there's lots of life, like train stations, cityscapes, beautiful new buildings. But I also find classical places like the castle interesting. There's a lot of history, and that has a certain charm, too. First, we look at the castle's architectural highlight, the famous spiral staircase. It's almost 20 meters high without a central supporting column. It was made of Elba sandstone almost 500 years ago, a masterpiece of German architecture. Daniel takes my portrait, and he also shows me the best spots for photos. We look around a bit more. The Torgau Castle Chapel was consecrated by Martin Luther himself in 1544. After a brief detour through the courtyard, we find the castle's four-legged residents. Bea, Benno and Yeti live in the castle moat in a species-appropriate habitat. <laughs> Keeping bears in the castle is a centuries-old tradition that survived to the present day. Not the most usual subject for Daniel Kula. Photography is a big part of his life, but he also has a job in tech. Would you like to do this as your main job? I've often asked myself that question, but doing half and half works well for me. A mix sounds good. Yes, that way you don't have the pressure to always have an assignment in order to make a living. The other job takes care of that, and I can concentrate on what I enjoy. Right now, it's the optimal mix for me. Okay. Ira's souvenir photo of Hartenfels Castle in Torgau. Before I drive back to Leipzig, my e-beetle needs a fresh dose of electricity. I want to enjoy some more art, so I drive back to the west of Leipzig, to a venue near the cotton mill, the Kunstkraftwerk. Immersive art is a global trend and it's on display here. The show Boomtown is about the industrial history of West Leipzig and the neighborhood's transformation. Not only can I watch the videos, I can also become part of them and immerse myself in the environment. 24 laser projectors beam the images onto the walls in breathtaking resolution. Another show catapults me into the world of color and texture that is the work of painter Vincent van Gogh. The idea for the Digital Art Centre came from interior designer Ulrich Maldinger and a few of his friends. They discovered the vacant building by chance and recognised its potential. It used to be a gasworks. 
One adventurous Sunday, early in December, we broke into this building. We looked around and we were completely overwhelmed by the interior. We thought, shall we do it or not? Our heads said no, but our guts said yes. <laughs> Your heart too, probably. Our hearts too, yes. So we took the plunge and decided to buy the building, without knowing exactly what we'd do with it. Since 2015, it's cemented Leipzig's reputation as an art hotspot. Well, I can certainly understand the hype surrounding Leipzig. If it's really the better city than Berlin, well, I guess I'm biased towards my hometown, but it's certainly a creative and inspiring place to visit. And if you're here, worth a trip into the surrounding area.